the tone of the scripts and the casting we've got very very young cast of, you know average age is probably about 22 you know um, is to make it all very youthful and to make it accessible to what we hope is going to be a youthful audience have we missed the speeches We want all the 13-year-old boys to look at Robin and his gang and say, I want to be one of them. And we want all the 13-year-old girls to look at Marion in her lovely sort of princess dresses and say, oh, I want to dress up like that. So I've done a mixture of medieval costumes and modern. So we've tried to mix in the modern with it. Whoa, whoa. I wish you no harm. But I will relieve you of your valuables. Sorry. I thought you were some rich noblewoman looking to donate your fancy jewels to a good cause. If we went down the Errol Flynn tights, men in tights routes, I think kids would find it a bit alienating. They wouldn't be able to relate to it. So we've tried to make it very accessible. Yeah. Have we got any of those sort of dead weasels? Did we get those over here? Did we get the dead weasels in? <laughs> did we get we the dead weasels? We did have a bag of dead Or a badger. <laughs> a badger will do. I mean, a weasel badger. Anything kind of vaguely large and marsupial. One of the deals about coming to Budapest and doing this was that we would use the studio and we would use all the facilities of the studio. So all the costumes would be made here in their costume workshops, who have turned out to be absolutely wonderful. They've made some marvellous things. But it's very rare. That's a luxury for me, because normally you think, well, you know, I can make a little bit, but we haven't really got enough money, because however big your budget, you're never going to have enough money. And you have to use things from the costume hire houses. Well, we haven't done that here. We've actually created everything. Marvellous idea. Frustrating results. Well, especially if you're my alchemist. This is my last one. In a piece like this, where you're dealing with a large number of people, I think you've got to give them all a very strong identity. I mean, in simple terms, the audience have got to be able to recognise quickly who everybody is. So they've all got to have their individual character and have their individual look. It's a bit like dressing a boy band, if you like. They've, they've got to know there's the tall one, where there's the fair one, there's, you know, there's the butch one. Um, so the characters are very firmly delineated in the script. So really it's a question of discovery of finding those characters and finding out their image, particularly in something like this, because they're living in the forest. They're only going to have the clothes they stand up in, so those are going to be the clothes we see all the time. <laughs> Robin is a soldier. He's been away at war for seven years, so we wanted to very much have a military figure coming back to England. And there, of course, there are all the echoes of the Gulf War and all the sort of modern warfare. So although he doesn't look like a modern soldier, he's got overtones of that mixed in with overtones of the Crusades. So when he comes back to domestic, rural England, he's very much a, a man of action. What do you think you're doing? You're killing innocent people! What kind of man are you? Oh. <laughs> Our Maid Marion is a very feisty girl. She's not a soppy Maid Marion at all. And she has two distinct looks. So she has her formal dressing up, going to the castle, going out with Edward, her father, the old sheriff. Uh, and she has very beautiful but conventional medieval outfits for that. And then there's another Maid Marion in private who wears, well, she wears trousers, which is completely anachronistic, but for what she's doing, she's running around the forest and shooting bows and arrows. It's the suit, you know, the right thing for her to wear. And she has a slightly more modern twist to her wardrobe at home. So 
it's not quite the sort of thing you could buy in the high street, but it's got overtones of that. And I hope that the audience will, will recognise the modern influences in those things. The costumes change quite dramatically from the first two episodes. Um, in the first two episodes, I'm wearing very pretty, very elegant dresses, got long hair, nice, you know, jewellery and stuff like that, which is good because she's introduced as the, you know, the woman, the princessy, you know, character. The character's sort of um, fighting, feisty male side does come out more in the following episodes, so the clothes kind of keep up with that and match up with the way the character's moving. Today we're uh, camera testing the costumes, hairstyles and uh, makeup effects for the show until we see them. Uh, Lucy, can you look above camera, please? Straight up above camera. Then can you take a slow, slow twirl until we see these things on camera. Um, we can't truly tell how they're going to look in the show. So if you test them in advance, it stops you having uh, any surprises on the day. Because things always look different in camera than do, they do in real life. Very good. Can you go to right, please? Well, Much. I love Much. He's my favourite. I knew that. He's like Sancho Panza. He, he occupies a middle ground. He's not entirely a servant, but he's certainly not a gentleman, and he can move between the two. And he's very loyal to Robin and follows him into all of this escapades that Robin undertakes. Not saying anything. So he's a very lovable figure, and we've tried to reflect his kind of hopelessness in his costume. He's a bit fraying and unravelling, so whereas Robin is very much the upright military gent, Much is much more of a, a shambling sort of a figure. He's kind of accumulated each layer across Europe and into Palestine. So, um, yeah, you've got kind of arabic -y scarves. There's going to be pilgrims, uh, uh, amulets and and jewels and things like that added. Um, then we've got a, a Tom, like a British Tommy's helmet, which this one's a bit too small, so they hopefully get a bigger one for much. It would be quite good if it didn't fit. Uh, and he's got his, um, I don't really know what this is, it's kind of scarfy head thing. Um, and he's got his sword and an interesting, these, I don't know what you call these, suspenders, uh, and you know, dusty boots which have seen many miles. John? <laughs> Little John is um, strength. That's what we've tried to do. I found this marvellous leather out here in Hungary, which is like the bark of a tree. So we've made him this long, long leather coat. No, that's not bad. Now, you see what I mean about it giving yeah. his shoulders? Yes, no, absolutely. I, and it's now got a bit more weight. Yeah, right? exactly. So plenty, you, plenty of things to trip up on. Oh, hopefully. Which would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good, yeah. I'll save you, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's all right, you've got your stick to lean on. <laughs> yeah. My staff. I'm so sorry, your staff. My staff. Give us a twirl, let's see. Certainly. Yeah, yeah no, good. you see, the, it moves much better yeah, with a no, bit of weight better. on the bottom. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. No, the, the, the bottom, that looks good. And then the studs all the way down here, yeah. just in case you don't look quite tough enough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're frightened, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's good. I think that's very good. But everything about him should say strength and brute force. He's got wide shoulders and big boots, and everything about him is very four square and strong. But we need some in there, but you I. You do need something there, but maybe I it's less than this. Some in leather. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Because I don't think so. I, I don't know about you, I'm not sure there's enough leather here. What do you what think? What about the stuff? Are you sure there's enough stuff? <laughs> I've got leather pants on, obviously, <laughs> which is good. Um, 
I'm yes. hesitating to cut that because we might need it. No, just... what, don't cut the scarf. No, no, no. 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 I think that's the raw material around there. I think I need something harder. Yeah, just something. Sure, fabric or something, yeah? yeah? Just like, yeah, almost like, um, what do you call that stuff that they put around here? The, the, um, webbing. Almost that sort of. Are you mm -hmm. sure? It'll look like a noose. That's not webbing. This is webbing. Is it? Is it known in the trade? That's training? not what I mean. Oh, You're mean. supposed to be able to read my mind. Of course. Oh, Francis. Oh, excellent. Yes. Pair of tights. Pair okay, of tights. try that. <laughs> <laughs> Little John wore his mother's tights. Yeah, but it explains a lot. Doesn't it, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, something, something yeah. like that is a better way. And it's, yeah. it's clearer. Yeah. Generally, you just try and make it more and more practical because you have to jump around and so you know underneath all this, there's all sorts of braces and <laughs> straps and stuff that, that keep it on, or keep me in place, or make me look slightly slimmer than I am, or whatever. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I and I have you know the you'll notice a lot of the merry men have their pouches, which is a very important medieval piece to keep mobile phones, books, cameras, uh, iPods in, and it's a crucial part of equipment. You can undress me now, ladies. You may not want to see this. Will is a carpenter, and we first meet him in a very domestic setting. He's at home with his family. He doesn't intend to run off with Robin and become part of the gang. So hopefully all the way through his progress, even when he's living in the forest, he remains a carpenter. He's the one with, with lots of straps with handy little pouches. He'd be the boy who always had the drawing pins or the box of matches. He's a very capable, sort of practical person. Uh, and his, so his costume is actually quite uncomplicated, but he has, you know, he has his axe and he has his saw and he can, he can make things. That's his big strength. We just had a, kind of put on the basics last week and they only just added all the belts in the, the bits and suddenly it really makes sense, especially it's all based on the fact that he's a carpenter and so you've got all the patches and pockets and stuff and no, I love it. And it, all, it all seems to be organic, it all fits together into one and it's, everything was in reachable distance. Big chopper it. that for you, keep rolling. You do it yourself? Yeah, right. Okay, here we go. And can you wield that for me? Alan is um, slippery. He's slippery. His costume is all very tight fitting, so there are no extraneous bits that might catch when he's running through the forest because he's, he's a poacher and he's dressed not quite in camouflage, but all in greens and browns, so he will disappear. If anybody, any gamekeepers or anybody see him, hopefully he can just disappear and hide in the foliage. Uh, but he's very smooth and slippery. You're never quite sure where you are with him. All those eager faces. Well, the sheriff... The sheriff is Keith Allen, who's going to be absolutely fantastic. And we had a first fitting with him this morning. Uh, he's entirely in black. And there's more than a hint of Versace about his costumes. <laughs> it's a lot of leather, a lot of fur. Um, they're very, very cool indeed. Take him to the dungeon. If he doesn't want to play nice, then we'll play nasty. He, there's a very good line in, I think, it's, I don't think it's in the script, it's in the stage direction saying there, if it was nowadays, he'd be on Class A drugs, and that's what he looks like. <laughs> he looks like a playboy. What is going on here? Three people have been killed under your nose. Well, that is unfortunate. It's incompetent. And what have you achieved? You found some food, the remnants of a picnic, but Robin Hood... No! Unless I found something which is more than can be you for you! Shut you... up! A couple of women! Guy would like to be the sheriff, but he's trying a bit too hard. Um, so, his, again, he's in leather, uh, and he's a, he's a bit of a thug, but he looks like an Italian racing car driver. He's um, very sleek, and he's got a big leather coat. Sort of, the equivalent would be a 1980s sort of trench coat, but made of black leather, and uh, he's got... 
he's very keen on having his logo on everything. So he's got his emblem on the back of his gloves and on his helmet and on his shield. And his little troop of soldiers have all got the Guy of Gisborne emblem on them. It's very status conscious. The minute somebody says to you, Robin Hood, you think, oh, what fun. <laughs> that really would be, you know, an interesting thing to do. It's not a period that you often get to play with. And doing it, as I say, with this modern twist has just made it even more interesting. And creating, or hope we've created, this little band of outlaws has been, it's been really fun.